Hey guys, this is Stefan with Corehawk 3D. This will be an instructional video on how to install the impulse slider upgrade for your Thrustmaster T16000 and throttle. You can find this part through the link in the description below if you don't have yours already. So a couple years ago I got the T16000M here. Um, it was a kind of a preparation scheme I had for a uh, flight school at the time. Um, it really helped out a lot. It's a good piece of hardware, don't get me wrong, um, but couple months in it developed some friction problems I could actually push on the throttle itself and have the whole thing slide across the desk now not all desks are the same but that's what I had at the time there I also developed a significant amount of play in the actual throttle itself I don't know if you can really see that well you can kinda of see it wiggling there um, another good way to see it is like this Oh, there we go yeah like that so um, just like any, any mechanical system that's got motion involved, the, uh, it's never going to be zero play, but I think we can do better, um, and this is the proof. So uh, to complete this upgrade, here's what I would recommend having. Bare minimum, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, small enough to get in all the different screws on the bottom of this thing, and then through and throughout. I would recommend having a Phillips head screwdriver, still pretty similar, um, small tip, but with a larger handle for one of the steps later on and then a rag with some isopropyl alcohol or an equivalent degreaser or cleaner for one of the steps uh, later on as well so um, without further ado we'll dive right in so first step it's going to be pretty obvious um, we're going to remove the bottom plate and uh, I already skipped the most obvious step um, that would be unplugging it from your computer um, I skipped this step before one time and I fried a sound card you all remember when controllers used to plug into sound cards through a, a VGA port yeah I, I totally fried hardware doing that so please please unplug this from your computer first before you start messing with things and uh, like inside an actual component anyways we'll, we'll keep uh, pulling these screws out here um, my, I think, yeah, there's eight on the bottom. I only have six because I stripped out a couple of them because I've been inside this piece of hardware so often. Um, so I only have to remove six, but hopefully you all have still have eight to remove. I would tilt it downward like this when you remove the back plate because these two rails on the side are, um, they're only retained really at the front. So when you pull it out, they could go flying unless you tilt it down to the front like this. So this comes out. I'm going to set it to the side here. We'll, we'll see that part later. All right. Well, I guess we'll still see it. Anyways, quick little uh, nomenclature crash course, I guess. Um, this is what I'm calling this stuff for the purpose of this video. I know this may not be the official terms, but this is what I'm going to call it. So this one I call the uh, sensor swing arm. Um, these I'm calling the rail case clamps. These are, this is the uh, friction assembly or leaf springs, cable harness, and then the actual handle itself uh, with its three screws that mount to it. This particular slider in, in particular has actual um, rail clamps on it that just retain the rails themselves. Uh, the one I built or 3D printed does not actually need those. Um, more on that later. So step one for this one, we're going to remove the the main screw on the the sensor swing arm and then make sure we don't lose it put, oh nice there we go put that over there gently um, removing it and kind of holding it down on this side moving it down to the uh, the south there this plastic piece it can come off um, don't don't panic if it does um, as you can see, mine has come off before. It's got just a little uh, piece of metal in there that helps interface with this sensor here. Um, it's held on with some small plastic clips, just like with anything small and plastic. The more you take it off and put it back on, the um, more likely it is to break. So try to avoid removing that a bunch of times, but don't panic if you do. Next step, we're going to very gently unplug this wire harness from the PC board here inside Just gently wiggling on the wires that's out now um, pull it out keep note that there's like going to be a little detent right here in the 
the uh, the tape that'll kind of help you uh, reinstall it correctly when you put that back in. Next up are these three screws on the actual slider itself that are going to loosen and remove the handle. Make sure the handle's touching the desk at this point in time because it will fall once you remove all of these if it's not. Alright, you can see it coming loose. Now it's out. Gently, I'm going to keep saying gently like a million times during this video, feed the cable through that hole. Our handle is removed successfully. We will set that to the side for now. Alright, next. I'm going to take the screws out for the the rail mount clamps in the case. Try not to lose any more screws. Like you saw, I already lost two. Oop. Nice. Alright, cool. Set that to the side. Do the same for the southern one. And then set that to the side as well. Alright. This next part is where you're probably most likely to pop this guy off, like the uh, the sensor swing arm. So slide this guy forward, rotate it out like this, gently start lifting it out and then rotate it out like that. Um, there may be a better way to do that. Um, I don't claim to be the expert on this, but that's a good way to kind of avoid popping that thing off. We'll remove the, the rubber bumpers off both ends for now, just so we don't lose them. So we're taking them off on purpose and they're not falling off or we don't know. And then these screws as well for the handle. We're going to reuse all of these. All right. We'll slide the rails out. Set these to the sides so they're not clanging loudly. All right. And then we'll remove the friction adjustment assembly or leaf springs. Set that to the side. I'm going to put this screw back on so I don't lose it and my one-year-old kid doesn't find it and eat it. Alright, cool. And you can say goodbye to the uh, the piece of hardware that originally came with it. You can see the, the rails rub on the structural plastic itself. It starts out really well and it degrades quickly in my opinion. It gets into the fresh plastic and develops a lot of static friction that uh, makes it really hard to do anything with precision. So. Again, that's why I made this upgrade, and uh, it'll help. It, the, the upgrade actually holds all of its um, tolerance really well. It doesn't actually have rails cutting into it, essentially, as, as you use it more and more. So I do have two variants that you can get on my uh, my page the, uh, in the link below. Um, one of them's you can do black or orange, and then there's the choice of the type of bearing. So we have on the right side here, um, two metal linear bearings. Um, you can pop them in and out if you want to of the actual part here. I don't know if you're going to be close enough to see here. You can see on the inside there's different tracks. There's four tracks in there with the actual bearings circulating through and throughout. Um, quick note on reinstalling them, just be gentle. It's a tight fit. Um, and then once you've installed them, slide them all the way forward. So. When you get it, just slide, make sure they're slided, slidden all the way forward, and then, uh, well, that's not a word. Anyways, these are the bushings. These are the self-lubricating polymer bushings. Um, I've included them both on the same one just for demonstration's purpose, because um, there are there. It does change a couple steps later on for the uh, the fine tune of the fit. So first. Uh, we're going to take a look at the inside of our case. Um, a little background on detents for throttle controllers. There are some, uh, I guess I, the correct term is atmospheric, but anyways, like flight simulators, like airplanes and stuff, that would benefit from an actual detent in the throttle itself, being able to feel a certain position in the, in the motion of the throttle so you know, hey, I'm at 50% right now. Um, it's particularly useful for space simulators because a lot of sims use the 50% position in, along the, the, the length of this travel here to set the zero thrust position for the, um, the sim. So you can actually park your ship in space by setting 
the, the throttle to this middle position. And if your throttle doesn't have a detent, it can be pretty hard to find where it is. And you're always trying to like fine tune that zero position on your, your, uh, your thrust. So this allows you to um, get to that position a lot more easily um, without having to actually look at your throttle, look at the thrust number. You can just find it quickly. If you don't really care about that, that's fine. You don't have to install this piece. Um, here's how it comes in the box, or in the bag actually. It's going to be this magnet on top of this other one, just held on magnetically, but with uh, adhesive on the back for mount inside this the up, upper half of the case. So the position on this slider is perfect so that it will be directly over this magnet at the 50% position let me see if I can get this position correctly. When that magnet is centered on this hole. And by hole, I mean circle. It's not a hole, it's a circle. See right there? Right there. So, throughout the injection molding process, or however they made this thing, I'm assuming it was that, they, they left a series of holes and you put it on the right one. So, to make sure it stays stuck, um, we're going to clean it with our rubbing alcohol and rag. I was using as a nice little retaining device for all my stuff. Gotta move it. All right. Again, um, common sense stuff. Please keep this stuff out of the reach of kids. Just talked about small screws, and I shouldn't have to say this, but please make sure your kids don't get a hold of rubbing alcohol. All right, that's clean. Oops, you see I bumped it off again, but it's okay. It's going to survive. And you're going to see that it survived because I'm going to make a gameplay video later on showing the benefit of this uh, upgrade. All right, so that's in there. I'm going to peel off the back of the adhesive, carefully not touching the adhesive, obviously, with my oily fingers. And then let's see. Let's see if you guys can see this well. To center it on the circle. Alright. Uh, I could go forward a little bit. I'm just trying to position for a camera. I didn't really look at it that well myself. Alright. I'll, I'll position it and then I'll show you guys. Press nice and hard on there, make sure it gets good and stuck on there. Um, it's not going to be permanent, so if you want to take it out, you can. Um, this is just your standard like scotch double-sided foam tape. Um, it's definitely strong enough to hold the magnet for however long you have it in there. But yeah, that's the way it should look when you install the magnet. It's You can you look at this other side for reference, um, and then just basically it's mirrored over there, centered on the circle that is now underneath it. That's the correct way to position that magnet. All right. Quick thing. Um, so you had the option of mounting that one. You also have the option of removing this magnet in the actual slider itself. So that thing is held in by friction. It's a interference fit engineered to be that way. You can just push like a small screwdriver through this hole on the back side. Sorry, it's a little bit backwards in my view. There we go. You can see it there. Now, it is a lot of friction on the actual hole, so don't like stab your finger. Make sure there's you're not going to do that, so you can just push it through like that. I'm not going to do it for this video. It's very easy to do. Um, you can pretty easily reinstall as, as well after that. It takes a good amount of pressure because it's held in there nice and tight. All right. Next thing we're going to do is transfer over the old leaf springs for the friction adjustment. So, like I said, this feature is maintained. You can still adjust the friction through that hole in the bottom of your controller when it's all put together. I thought that was a pretty neat feature and obviously there's no reason to get rid of that. The original slider has a little bit of uh, squishy felt kind of on this, this leading edge right here. Um, I do not, but I did position the hole here so that it it holds the leading edge of the springs against that that kind of leading wall there so you're not going to hear it rattling on the inside 
um, like I did so many times when I was making my prototypes. So yeah, you can kind of see like it's 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 not gonna rattle on you, but you can still apply the friction. So there's that. We're gonna install the rails now. So for you, uh, um, if you order just the the bearings, it's really straightforward. You just put it through, make sure your, your friction block gets out of the way. Easy, just like that. With the bushings, you may notice a little bit more friction. We'll, we'll touch on that later after we get this thing back into the actual case. There we go. Cool. You can kind of see that the, it's a good comparison right now. That's the noise there. That's the noise there. It's really whatever you prefer. When you push hard down on this when it's installed, there is zero difference in the friction. When you push downward on these, you can get an increase in friction. It's really whatever you prefer um, as far as the what you want your controls to feel like. It's two very different and unique feelings that you can get. All right. Next, we're going to put the bumpers back on that we did not lose or let our kids or pets eat. Alright, there's four of them. Alright. Kind of like we did before, I'm going to try to perturb this swing arm as little as possible. It, will, it won't be perfect, it's going to move a little bit. Alright, now I can see it very easy to do. You can just get like one of your bumpers stuck up there in kind of the contacting area for the rail. Just slide it on back. Cool. All right. Next we're going to install the rail clamps for the case. Good. Next one. And if you're gonna like replay this video and say, oh, you put the screw from the the handle in the the uh, um, the rail clamps, you're probably right. And these screws are all the same, so lucky for all of us, you don't have to keep track of what screw goes where unless it's a different color. But as you can see, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory and pretty simple. So. If you, like I said earlier, if you have the, the metal bearings, um, it's going to be just plug and play. Tighten these down, tighten these down, you're good. If you have the bushings, believe it or not, these rails may not all be the same um, level of straightness or even roundness. So we, we benefit, I don't know if I said this before, but we benefit from 3D printers running off of 8 millimeter rails, which is what these bearings and bushings are primarily designed for. It's just pure luck that we have bearings that fit these rails. So these things are very tightly toleranced and you can get some binding potentially um, throughout the different travel of your different areas of travel on your rail. So if you do and you're feeling some kind of binding force like at the towards the front or towards the back, just loosen these a little bit and then slide back and forth while rotating, like spinning the rails and seeing what different orientation essentially along its longitudinal axis is going to be the least amount of friction. And once you have that set, start rotating these individually. And you may have to go back and forth um, between all three of those variables per side. I guess that's a bunch of like six variables in total to get the perfect amount of friction that you want for the best consistent feel. Once you got that all set, Tighten these down. You really shouldn't have an issue like that. I'm, I'm predicting that most of you won't, but just in case, um, there's that instruction there. So I'm going to loosen the friction here a little bit. You kind of see the, uh, the detent works very well. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. Next, we're going to mount our handle. So Bring this guy back over here. Start feeding it through the hole. Um, a good way to do this is to make sure the uh, 
the round part of the spacer goes through the lower left portion and the wires go through the upper right portion of the hole. It slides through nice and easy that way because it is a little bit of a snug fit if you do it another way. All right, quick little sanity check. Make sure the panel's facing the right way so that the screw holes line up. Grab these guys. And put the three screws in. All right. Good. All right. I mentioned earlier having a large screwdriver. Um, we're about to get to that part. <clears throat> we'll slide that forward, kind of set it like this. Just initially position the, the wire harness in its slot. Kind of try to match up that little detent on the tape that we talked about before. There should be one just left imprinted on it from when it was there before. Gently, like I said before, we put the Plug the wire harness back into its part on the board, ensuring that our wires are going in their correct slots and not getting caught on any of the, the surfaces they're going to be contacting the lower plate um, and causing it to kind of bow out. All right, like I said, I talked about having a little bit bigger grip of a screwdriver. That's for this part. Um, what I'm sending you is not going to have any kind of a uh, a pre-tapped hole for this one. So you're going to be basically tapping new threads into it with the screw from the other um, slider. I could have tried to tap that for you, but I wanted to make sure that we didn't do any thread crossing or anything like that so that you get as, as uh, untouched of a part as possible. I'm going to get it started with this little guy but I'm going to need the bigger one to get the kind of torque on it that's going to allow it to really go in there. All right, there we go. All right, cool. You'll you still be able to tell when it's at when it uh, um, goes all the way home. It will definitely have a, a, a sharp rise in the the uh, tension. And actually, I need to back that off just a little bit so we're not um, adding unnecessary friction along the uh, control arm. There we go. Just a little bit of play in there. So this, this control arm does not need to be a part of our friction equation for this. All right. Next part, we're going to run this back and forth a few times just to look at the dynamics of this wire harness, just to make sure, especially in this position up here, that we're not stretching it and it's not trying to pull it back because I've experienced that. You put it all together, it's great to go, and then you try to set full power and it just goes, yeah, sure, and then it just pulls back a little bit because there's tension on this guy. So I've got it set the way it needs to be. I've done this a few times. Just make sure that this little piece of tape here is longitudinally positioned where it needs to be to not um, create unwanted tension at the end of the at the forward portion of the stroke of the uh, throttle. All right next part we're going to take all of our cables and make sure that everything is where it needs to be. Give this thing a once over make sure you don't see anything out of place. We got our wire harness it's in its slots, all of its little spacers are where they should be. This thing's attached, attached, three screws, a screw on the leaf spring, two there, two there. Our magnet's looking good. And then uh, once more for these two. This one can slide out pretty easily. I'm going to slide this all the way back like that. Lean it forward so we can retain, like I said, those two rods um, on this guy just so you can see what happens. Like, they like to, they can slide out this way, so that's why I tilt it forward. So back in you go, and then we'll tilt it downward like this. See, this thing's already coming out again. <clears throat> All right. Be 
Beautiful. All right. I'll tighten my side six little screws down. You guys will tighten your eight down. Um, don't worry, my kids have not eaten those other two. They're probably at a previous house. Um, all right. So that is that. Um, here is the throttle. Um, I know this is a, a, a downward view, but um, let's see if we can loosen the friction here all the way. I'll show you what this guy's show you guys what this is gonna look like. Um, yeah, there we go. Look at this. There's the detent. I'm gonna kind of help it pass, and it 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 slides very well. Again, I'm, I know you can't really see very well how little I am tilting this thing, but. There's very little friction, and I hope you all remember how much play we saw at the beginning here, because you can hardly see any right now in any direction. So, it, like I said, it's a mechanical system. It moves. There is still going to be a little bit that you can feel, um, but it feels really good. And what you're hearing right now, that's that, that loud sound is going to be what the metal ones sound like. The polymer ones are a little bit quieter, like I said. Pushing hard down on the metal ones, you don't get a change in friction. For the polymer ones, you do get a slight increase in friction. Um, it's really just whatever you prefer. So, if you like this video, please leave a like. Um, I'm really not a. This is my first YouTube video, so I, I mean, subscribe if you want to. I'll be probably be putting out a uh, gameplay video with you know more sweet hand modeling footage of uh, just just some of the the small movements you can get in this, just as a demo. Um, yeah, um, thanks for watching if you got this far and, uh, have fun gaming.